Hello, my name is Vishal. Let's see the fluid 2D texture inside Maya. Uh, for that, I'll just open Hypershade. And in 2D textures, we have this uh, texture called fluid 2D texture. This is nothing but uh, creating a fluid effect and then connecting the output to any shader as a texture. So fluid to a texture 2D is a, a subject in itself because there's a lot in the fluid texture there. It's about dynamics, it's about shading. So a lot goes into this, but uh, I'll show you how we can use this and then I'll probably take uh, some example on that. So what I do is I'll take a plane first, shift right click and then create a plane there. And I'm just scaling this plane. And now I'll take a shader, uh, assigning shader here. In another way is just go to the rendering and uh, select your model and click the Lambert. So you have assigned the Lambert shader uh, to the model. And in color, we will bring up the fluid 2D texture. Okay, so this is a container, uh, it's a 2D container in which uh, you probably see or create uh, dynamics and whatever you create here will be seen as the texture on the model. Uh, let's say I, pr I just uh, make this uh, density to the gradient and then I'll just go to the shading and we have the color black and white in the ramp here and change it to the center gradient and see what is happening in the container can be seen on the model here because its output is now a texture. I can add as many as inputs and I can pick the colors I want here. and it works perfectly there. So whatever you see here can be seen here. We have uh, texture options here. So as uh, this is color, this is incandescence, this is opacity. So I'm just getting into the color and enable texture color. You can press six on the keyboard if the textures are not visible. The amount of texture to be used is controlled by the color texture gain and we have the frequency and we have the texture time which we can use to animate them. I can just simply type equals to time as a null expression and press enter on the keyboard. And when you hit play, you see that sort of moving wave pattern. So how much amount of texture to be used can be seen here. Color texture gain value is 0, no texture used. Value of 1 which is the default, this is what you get here. And if I use a 0.5, it will reduce the amount of texture we are using on the model. We have different patterns here. It's just explore them. And see what you get there. We have different types of textures too. That is below. Volume wave. wispy space time mandelbrot mandelbrot i will not use it uh, we'll discuss mandelbrot separately in a different video
all these values we can be uh, animated because if I just move this, you can see there is uh, some sort of um, Yeah, it looks cool. It looks like uh, some magical effect which you can use. Um, and uh, we can change this to X gradient where you can see in the X axis the gradients he applied. The Y gradients and the Z gradient. The center gradient and whatever you do here can be seen on the model here okay this is a texture uh, effect this is a non dynamic effect if I just change this to a dynamic grid and uh, go to the effects tab in fluids add an emitter you get an emitter there when you play it you see that effect is achieved it's not updated on the model I don't know why so I select uh, delete this texture go back to Lambert and see if the dynamics are working or not so I select add a emitter and then apply then play it. Now you see there is an immediate effect there. We can add more density to the fluid. So it is a dynamic effect and uh, whatever dynamics is happening can be seen as a texture on the model. No matter what type of model it is. Even you take a character, it should work. Just imagine using this and creating some beautiful effects on the model. Cool, isn't it? Uh, the UVs are very important in this case. Uh, we have a lot of dynamics uh, in this to control with. For example, I'm using the swirl and then the fluids go swirling you reduce the buoyancy or increase it okay so amazing uh, results can be seen here with this model so I have something really cool effect uh, which I want to try here I just want to try uh, something like a paper burning so I just want to try it so I just uh, bring the plane back and uh, I will go to the Lambert break connection and then create a new fluid 2d texture uh, let me delete this and bring it here like that and uh, I'll be keeping uh, this one as uh, static uh, the density and the temperature to the dynamic gradient okay let's see uh, what will happen now okay now just um, go to the display and uh, display fuel here and go to the fluids and uh, paint fluids so I'll choose uh, the fuel and increase the brush size and then start painting uh, it's not updating in the real time let's see yeah 
I fill the whole container with the fuel. Now just choose the temperature. Put the radius to zero point one, and then paint the temperature. But I just want to. Okay, that's the fuel. That's the temperature. I want to paint the temperature. Yeah, you could see that temperature is painted. Cool. Now just display as render, and then play it. I should see. I should say I just kept the fuel as the output display, and you see the weights, you know, expanding there. Now, if I just get into the content details, and then in temperature or in the fuel, if I reduce the or increase the fuel reaction speed, it, you know. Burns quickly. Okay. And um, I just go to the turbulence and increase the turbulence there. Then you get that wave, high frequency, and uh, I see that nice burning effect. So the the paper getting uh, caught with fire, that's what you get here. But somewhere you feel that okay, I don't really want these colors here. The reason I'm getting these colors is uh, in the shading section um, here. Uh, the temperature is linked with the incandescence. I put. Uh, constant and then pick a black color and here I, I pick temperature and then cut it close and then you see a ring of fire slowly expanding the paper getting caught with uh, the temperature That way. If I pick this to fuel, then you get this. 